I've been shooting most of the vlogs on this channel and also on my German YouTube channel with my iPhone XR, which is now a bit more than four years old and actually also now in the possession of my mother because I upgraded to the iPhone 14 Pro um, basically for only one reason and that's the improved camera both for video but also for still pictures because now this camera features a 48 megapixel uh, main camera so that's a higher resolution than my R5 but to be honest we need to consider that the sensor here is way smaller so if we take a picture and zoom in we can also clearly see here that the details in both shots well they actually look quite comparable. I need to be honest, I was not expecting this, but this was just one test. So I also wanted to see how it performs in a higher dynamic range shot during the dawn, twilight, or even night. So that's what this video is about. Just uh, comparing the iPhone 14 Pro, both to my old iPhone, but especially to my R5 and sharing my experiences that I've had with this phone for the last couple of weeks. The sensors in the iPhone have continuously improved over the years and still they were always like stuck on 12 megapixels and now we have this huge jump to 48 megapixels and that 48 megapixels is 4 times 12 is not a coincidence because in most of the situation the iPhone 14 will still take 12 megapixel photos. It will only take 48 megapixels if you want the high resolution RAW and if there's enough light available. If just one of the two conditions are not met, then it will still save 12 megapixel files, which are still an improvement over the 13 Pro, from what I hear. And honestly, for most situations, it's probably enough. And it has the advantage that file sizes keep a bit smaller. But in these situations where you really want to see more details, let's say you left your camera at home because you're just going on a hike, or you want to take some nice making of pictures, then these 48 megapixels come in handy and that's how I'm going to use the phone or have been using it so far to really use the 48 megapixels only when I feel that I need them. And I want to now look at a bit more comparisons. So the first one, here is the overall scene. You have already seen the close-up shot. And what we already see in the overall picture is that, of course, the water looks a bit different just because the Canon had a longer shutter speed. Um, because the aperture of the iPhone is uh, much more open, so there's more light coming in, so the shutter speed will be shorter. And if we zoom in, I think really it's impressive how similar they are. Maybe the colors are still a bit softer on the R5, but the difference is not huge. And I feel like for the first time ever, I have a smartphone which is not over sharpening or overdoing things, at least in the RAW format. But then I also thought it's quite an easy scene for the iPhone. Um, let's move to one that is a bit more difficult, so with more dynamic range. And I just, when I went home, I took some of the house, this time with all three cameras, the ultra wide, the main camera and the telephoto. So here, starting with the ultra wide, I compared it to the R5 again with the 14 to 35. So the first picture obviously at 14. And you can see that the um, iPhone is a tiny bit wider, but not if we crop it to the 3 to 2, then they would be about the same. And now if we zoom in, we see that the um, iPhone 14 also handles the dynamic range quite well. But when it comes to details, it completely falls apart compared to the R5, which is not surprising because the ultra wide and the telephoto lens, they're both uh, still at 12 megapixel. So of course there is a big difference. Um, but again, for most situations, it would be fine. Even if you want to print it at a normal size, it should be totally fine. Next, I switch to the main camera with 48 megapixels. And if we zoom in here, I again need to say that differences are really not that big. I mean, they are visible, don't get me wrong. I think the colors are a bit nicer on the camera, but not much. And we see more details like in the house, in the walls and around the windows. But overall, the iPhone is keeping up very well. It's handling the dynamic range exceptionally well. Um, of course, I edited the pictures a bit so that they look similar because if you get a raw file out of the camera, 
especially in this environment, I really need to push the shadows and uh, bring the highlights down. Otherwise, uh, the image lo would not look that nice. And then finally, I wanted to test the telephoto camera. This can be if you have a subject that is a bit farther away, it can be zooming in a landscape or maybe some animals that are not too shy because it corresponds to roughly 72 millimeters. So here I was stuck with my Canon R5 with the 14 to 35. Um, so I tried and of course I needed to zoom in more with the um, 14 to 35, but still the level of details is comparable. So this was really uh, clear here and even in the lower like in the shadowy parts the R5 is clearly out resolving the iPhone and then I switched the lens on my R5 because that's why you have an interchangeable lens camera system and I took the 70 to 200 at 70 millimeters and the house is a bit blurry because I didn't close the aperture enough but if you look at the mountains then we see that the different the difference in details is huge and also the dynamic range is better so obviously especially when you need more more reach a r5 or any other dslr or a mirrorless camera with a proper telephoto lens still beats the iphone but what if it gets a bit darker because there the bigger sensor should really be able to perform better so when i went camping uh, in mid of november I took some pictures with the phone of the tent and then I switched to the R5 and here we can really see a difference. The R5 has less noise, more details, especially the dark parts. But it's again maybe not the fairest comparison because the R5 was mounted on a tripod, the iPhone was handheld. So I also did a comparison where both were handheld, the iPhone and the R5. And here the difference is not as big anymore but it's still there. So here the R5 clearly wins. But once again, I was surprised how well the iPhone performed and the iPhone actually saw more details in the night than my own eyes did. As I said, I was coming from the iPhone XR. So there's four years of development and going from the low, low budget or the budget version uh, phone to the flagship, the Pro model. Of course, there's a big difference. And if we just even use the main camera and zoom in in both, we can really see the difference. The dynamic range is better and there's just so much more details. Um, in general, I was quite happy with the camera of my uh, XR, so I didn't complain. But the thing is, once you go on tour with somebody that had an iPhone 13 Pro, it was already, wow, this camera is really better. And now the iPhone 14 Pro is just, yeah, it's destroying it completely. Um, of course, even more extreme if you use the telephoto lens and the iPhone XR, you need to zoom in digitally. Um, but then what I wanted to see mostly or most interested was how the video performed. So I took both phones um, like this, one on top, one on the bottom and filmed. So the same scene, the shake is all the same. I was just walking and overall, I feel like there's more detail in the iPhone 14 Pro shot, which is on the right more a bit better dynamic range, but both are handling quite well. But what we see most pronounced is that there's just way less camera shake. So I think this will come in quite handy when I do more vlogs. And yeah, maybe to sum up, what are my experiences? I'm really glad so far that I invested in it for new vlogs, it will be amazing. Also with the cinema mode that you now have in 4K for shooting videos. The colors are better and especially and more you have more details if it's getting a bit darker. That's what I really noticed when filming and again also with photography. So I'm quite happy here. The camera is amazing with the 48 megapixels and even built down to 12 megapixels. I see an improvement over my old camera. Just two small things that I would criticize that I would wish for in an iPhone 15 Pro, which I will not buy, but um, and that's the wide angle and the telephoto camera. If they could be improved a bit, especially the wide angle camera, this would be amazing. They don't need to have a bump up to 48 megapixels, but now they're falling a bit behind. And the second thing is do something about the file size. I mean, 100 megabytes for per RAW, this is really big. If I should see RAW with my R5, I have files that are 20, 25 megabytes. So I, I would hope that there was an option that would save a little bit more space. And then I also have some things for Canon. So iPhone is clearly getting amazing results with a 
tiny sensor. I don't want to think how the pictures would look like if we had the iPhone software and processing in an R5. There is just so much more AI. It can be for long exposure, for the smart HDR. Um, I have the feeling the white balance is just working way better. So yeah, if something like this would be, if Canon could just update a bit the firmware, this would be amazing. But yeah, to conclude, I'm really happy so far with the camera of this phone. Um, I'm sure you will see more examples in the videos that I'm doing, at least if you follow the channel. So if you didn't already do that, then please do it and see you in the next video. Bye.